Hello and welcome to this session on static electricity. We're going to take a look at the amazing natural phenomenon that is static electricity, how static shocks are formed and even look at lightning. In this video we've got lots of cool demonstrations that we can show you using some of the special equipment that we have here in our HQ and there are some activities that you can follow along with too. So let's start off with some of the items that you might need to go and find in your household. You're going to need to find a balloon, a plastic ruler, so it can be any of the plastic rulers that you can find in a home or even a plastic rod or tubing like UPVC piping. You're going to need to find a cloth, so a dusting cloth or a microfiber cloth or even a silk handkerchief will do. You're going to need some lightweight materials that we can test out with these, such as some feathers, or a bit of foil or even sweet wrappers, some paper confetti or polystyrene ball, pom-pom, even rice krispies. Hmm. You're also going to need a template. So we've got a template of a butterfly that you can download. We recommend printing it on something a bit thicker than paper and it could be on coloured card. We're going to need some tissue paper. We're going to need some glue and a pair of scissors. So go find those things now and I'll see you in a moment. So we're gonna start with our balloon. So if you'd like to inflate it, you might need an adult to help you tie the knot. We're gonna take a look at this balloon and how we can create a static effect. Now, most of us can feel static electricity and have probably felt a static shock. And whilst it can feel a little uncomfortable, it's not usually harmful at all to ourselves. And we can feel it when perhaps we're touching something metal. So a car door or a handle for a door, sometimes going down a metal slide in the park, or even if we're jumping up and down on the trampoline and we touch the poles that are holding the netting on the trampoline or even each other. And this static effect is created using a force called friction. So friction happens when two surfaces rub together. We know if we rub our hands together really hard, they get really warm. And that's a result of friction. The two surfaces rubbing create heat. Now, different surfaces, when they rub together, don't just produce heat, but they can produce static electricity. So if we take our balloon, for example, we can rub it against our hair. It's got a nice long hair today. We'll make it a little bit messy. We'll give it a nice big rub. There we go. Oh, look. And we've got this amazing effect, the static effect. So we can see that as I rub my hair, what's happening is tiny little particles on my hair called electrons are now taking off of my hair and they're being shared with the balloon. And these electrons have a negative charge. And everything has a charge and it's normally in balance. But when we rub the surfaces of two things, the balance changes. These negative electrons start to go onto the balloon and leave my hair slightly positive. And because we've got a positive and a negative, they attract towards each other and they tend to stick and pull. So this is where we get static electricity. Oh, some interesting hair going on there. Now, if we create enough static electricity, so I will try and rub it again. There should be enough negative energy to now send our balloon and get it to stick to the wall. If we get it to stick to the wall, what we can see is happening is it's sharing those electrons. The wall is now positive, the balloon is quite negative, and they're sticking together. So it's a little bit like what happens with um, magnets, a similar idea that the two opposites are attracting towards each other. So sometimes things can charge up and they can attract, and sometimes they can charge up and they can repel. And it depends on whether that surface of that material is giving away electrons or bringing electrons into it. So if it's giving away, it's going more positive, is it, it's bringing electrons onto it and they're getting it added on, it's getting more negative. So our balloon's not the only material that can have this effect. We can use our ruler, for example, and we can charge it up. So by rubbing it up and down with a cloth, we're making it either very positive or very negative. And then it depends on what the other materials are doing. So we've got all our materials out on the table here. And for example, if I pop it near, oh, a little bit of a sweetie wrapper, it's getting very staticky, and that static is, means that they're attracted towards one another. We can have a look at our feather. You can see 
different parts of the feather are attracted towards our ruler here. Um, even our little bit of paper gets ooh, very stuck. You could try different rulers and you can try different materials and see what effects that they have. Another thing you can try is with an empty can. So we can take an empty drinks can and we can take our charged up balloon. We're going to give it a little bit more energy. And we put a drinks can on the table. We can actually get our balloon to follow the drinks can. Looks a bit magical. But we can make it move in both directions. So here's another simple experiment that we can see this static effect. So I've got a little bottle of water here and um, we're just going to balance a straw on the top. So I'm going to charge up my straw, rubbing it with my cloth. And once I think it's nice and charged, I'm just going to pop it on top of that. And I'm going to charge up my ruler. If we just put the ruler near, we can see there's this huge amount of stackage electricity there and it's making our straw swirl around. We can create an amazing static effect using some little polystyrene balls. It looks a little bit like a magic wand. So if I charge this ruler up here, some little polystyrene balls in this pouch. If we put the ruler near it, some of the balls are attracted and fly up and others repel and fly away. Here I've got a couple of polystyrene balls which are just dangling at the end of a string. Now I'm going to charge up my ruler with the cloth so it gets more and more negatively charged. And if we put that charged ruler next to our polystyrene balls, you can see it's almost like magic, like a magic wand wishing it to stick. And up they go and stick to the ruler. So the negatively charged ruler is attracting the positively charged polystyrene ball. Oh, that's a very cool trick. So we can see that this effect looks similar to magnetism, where we have things being attracted or are repelled. Now, the ancient Greeks actually discovered static electricity when they started to polish bits of amber. When they were rubbing it with materials, they found that it was producing little sparks, little static shocks. So lots of us have experienced that static shock before, like when you touch the car door or a handle. And it's caused by the same effect. It's friction. Two surfaces rubbing together and then all of those electrons are building up on one particular surface. But depending on what we're wearing can depend on how much static electricity builds up. So if we're wearing lots of synthetic clothing with synthetic fibres, even to our shoes, that can help insulate from the static electricity moving around. So it means rather than it flowing down into the ground or flowing through a conductive material, what's actually happening is it's building up on our body. So if you're wearing rubber soled shoes or synthetic soled shoes, then the static electricity is going to build up on you when you walk across a carpet. Now, one of the reasons that we have fabric conditioner is to overcome this. Not only does it make our clothes nice and soft and snuggly, but by adding fabric conditioner, it actually makes our clothes more conductive so that the material doesn't build up as much static electricity. And without it, you may have noticed that when you take a jumper off, you can hear those crackles in the evening or maybe even see tiny little sparks and feel the clothes clinging towards you. And that's the static effect. So let's have a look at sparks created using static electricity. Now we all would have seen lightning and heard thunder, but how does it happen? Well, quite often we see thunderstorms when we've got a hot, dry day. So we need low humidity and that means we've got less water vapour in the air. And what happens is the thermal currents actually allow warm air to get taken up into the cloud. Now, as we get further away from the surface, we find that the water droplets get frozen. And the mixture of warm air and water droplets and little ice crystals actually swirl around and create static electricity in the same way using friction. So all these electrons start building up in the cloud until it gets too much for it to hold and the bottom of the cloud gets really negatively charged and the top of the cloud becomes positively charged and the lightning happens between the two. This is where we see thunder happening inside the clouds. 
But if we get a really big build up, then the discharge tends to find a quicker route down to the ground. So sometimes we see lightning hopping between clouds and sometimes we see it happening down to the ground. And we can create a static sparky effect using a special Victorian machine. So this is the Wimshurst machine and it was invented by James Wimshurst in 1883. Now what we have here are two discs and the discs have different strips of metals on. So we've got two different types of metals. And we've got one disc at the front and one at the back. We've got a little handle here that will spin them in different directions. And as they build in different directions, it's going to amplify the amount of static electricity that's caused using friction. So we've got brushes here, they're gonna rub these little strips of metal. And that charge then builds up on these, char on these jars and gets distributed on these electrodes. And when the charge builds up enough at the end of these electrodes, we should see a spark jumping in the air. So let's turn the handle and give it a go. Wow. Let's see if we can build up some bigger sparks. If we move the electrodes a little bit further away, can we get a big one? Wow. Now that's pretty cool in the lights, but let's turn the lights out. Oh, we got some nice big sparks there. <laughs> Next, we're going to investigate another machine. We have a machine called a Van de Graaff generator. And a Van de Graaff generator works, again, using friction to create static electricity. And you can get a mini form of a Van de Graaff generator in a toy form. So this is called a fun fly stick. And inside of the fun fly stick, we've got a motor. And the motor is pulling around a belt. And the belt's running on two pulleys. These two pulleys are actually made of two different materials. One is more likely to give away electrons than the other. And as the belt goes round, it collects the electrons from this material and it starts to build up on a little strip of conductive metal inside. And then that coats the tube on the outside, the cardboard tube here, building up static electricity. So I can turn it on, you can hear it flowing away. We're not going to be able to see a lot, not going to do a lot to my hair, but we can use some other objects. So here we have a little bit of tinsel that's been cut out into a special shape. And this is actually made of a bit of mylar. Mylar is the kind of material that we use in sort of space blankets, these emergency blankets to keep you warm and reflect the heat back in. If we turn on the sun fly stick, we'll start to see it building up some static electricity. And we're just going to have a little play and see if we can get it to repel and fly. Wow. <laughs> some things it's attracted to, while other things it repels. <laughs> it's tickling me. <laughs> This Van de Graaff generator here creates static electricity using a belt. So we have a motor that makes this belt go round with a pulley at either end. So there's a pulley down the bottom here that's made of one material and another one at the top inside made on, from another. As the belt turns round, the friction that happens between the belt and the pulleys creates a load of electrons that come off and build up on the belt. And this static electricity starts to build on this metal ball. So the Van de Graaff generator is ready to go. Now we're going to try out a couple of objects and see how the static electricity builds up and repels different objects. Now pie plates are really good at conducting electricity. So we're going to place a stack of pie plates on top and switch it on. Let's see that again. Ah, 
And there's even enough static electricity to make that one stick to the wall. Okay. Now, like our Windhurst machine, the Van de Graaff generator here would produce large amounts of static sparks if we put something metal next to it. So we have here a globe that is earthed. And that means that the static electricity is going to pass through it. So we've got something that's going to be more positive than the static electricity that's building up on here. So we're going to switch it on and you can see the sparks fly. And let's turn out the lights. Next, we can use this cool static effect to create this magical illusion with our butterfly template. So if we take our card template and our tissue paper, what we're going to want to do is to cut out our template and the tissue paper to be exactly the same as this butterfly in the centre here. Now, the good thing about butterfly is it is symmetrical. So it has a line of symmetry right down the middle here. So if we actually fold our template in half, we can put piece of tissue paper in the centre. So we can use the fold line in the tissue paper, put it in the centre of the card. And that means that when we cut out our card and our tissue paper at the same time, we'll end up with exactly the same shape. Here's one I've already done. So I printed it on green card and put the tissue paper inside. And when I cut it out, I've ended up with both of those butterflies being the same size. So we're going to take the glue next. And we're just going to put a strip of glue right down the centre of the card. When you're gluing, glue the card. Don't glue the tissue paper because it's quite fragile and it's most likely going to tear if we glue that. So glue the card. And then we can line up our tissue paper in the centre. So we're finding that line of symmetry again. And we can open it out and stick it down in that centre line. So this should be the only part that's stuck and our butterfly should be free to flap away the tissue paper. Now using static electricity we can make our butterfly fly. So you could choose to use the balloon and build up your static electricity on your balloon again. Make the wings fly. Or you could choose to charge up your ruler and see if the wings will fly with the ruler. It's like a magic wand using static electricity. Your static toy doesn't have to be a butterfly shape. You could try any shape at all. We've got a couple of examples here of some superheroes. And these superheroes have our tissue paper capes on the back. So as soon as a statically charged balloon goes near them, their capes will flap. So you could have a go at something like this. Now, I hope you've enjoyed our static video today. And next time, we'll be looking at electricity and circuits.